Welcome back to PSD Tuts. In this tutorial, we'll look at some interesting ways to extrude, twist, taper, and otherwise to form 3D objects, both by dragging in the head-up display and by tweaking the numbers. We're going to build a bolt from scratch using a variety of techniques. So let's get started. First of all, we'll draw the screw thread of the bolt, so we'll switch to our Layers panel and make a new layer. And let's call this one Thread. To draw this, we'll use the elliptical marquee tool, make a circular selection, and let's fill this with a mid-grey. We can do that by going to the Swatches panel, choosing our grey, and now we can press Alt Backspace or Option Backspace on a Mac to fill the selection with that colour. And now we can deselect. There's our circle. Let's, in the 3D panel, make sure 3D Extrusion is selected, and now just click Create. And right away there is our object as a 3D Extrusion. Now let's have a look at how we can manipulate this object. We've already seen that by clicking on it, we get the bounding box coming up where we can move it back and forth. And if we press the V key on the keyboard, we now get this head-up display. And in the middle there are our extrusion controls. So drag upwards to add to the extrusion and drag down to reduce it. So we can set the depth of our object exactly using this control. What's rather interesting now is these extra controls that light up around the object. And let's see what these do. Well, the first is this square box around the extrusion control, and that is our taper control. And by dragging that up or down, we make the object get larger and smaller as it recedes into the distance. And you can see how this is making an effect on what we're drawing. As well as tapering it, we can bend it. So when we move up from the taper control, we now get to the bend control. And by dragging in here, we can bend our object to the left, to the right, or up and down. And we do this simply by clicking in here and dragging in the direction we want to go. So we could make, for example, a bent flugelhorn effect by having it curving around like this. Now, it's clearly quite hard to control the amount of bend accurately by dragging like this. So what I recommend is you use this technique to get it more or less what you want, and then switch to the Properties panel. And in here, you can see the amount of extrusion, the amount of taper, and the amount of bend exactly as you want it. If we wanted to change the horizontal bend to, say, 45 degrees, and the vertical bend to zero, we can just type those numbers in, and now we have this object that bends round to the side, but doesn't bend up or down at all. So it's always worth going back to these controls to set the precise amount of the deformation. And when you go to the Properties panel, you can see it's divided into these separate sections. So the first button here gives you the basic mesh control. The second one gives you the deformation control with extrusion, twist, taper, bend and shear, and so on. Then we get the cap and the coordinates, the position of the object in space. As well as bending, we can also choose to shear it by pressing this button, and you can see the icon for shearing changes, and now rather than bending it on a curve, it's bending it on a straight line. In this case, though, we don't want to bend at all, so we can set the bend amount to zero you can always press the Reset Deformation button 
and it'll put everything back to how it was when we started. Now let's extrude this a bit further and have a look at this control around the outside. This is the twist control and as we turn it you can just about see that there's some small amount of twisting going on. The trouble is, because we're working on a cylinder, it doesn't matter how much you twist a cylinder, it still looks like a cylinder. So let's adjust the shape of this so we can get our screw thread into it. And we can do that by clicking on the Mesh button on the Properties panel, and we can press the Edit Source button right down at the bottom and it opens our original drawing in a new window. Let's pull this out so we can keep it separate from the rest of the image and also so we can see the image behind it. Now let's try making a new layer inside this. On this new layer we can draw the shapes that we want to add the thread. So let's try first of all going to the rectangular marquee. We can draw a square shape and let's position it up on this corner and fill that with grey. And let's take copies of this and position it around this circle so we get the four corners appearing. In order to apply this to our shape, all we do is to save this PSB document which is stored within our 3D object. And we go to File and Save. And now something rather unusual happens. What's curious here is that it has completely ignored our lower layer and only worked on the upper layer. So what we have to do is to merge these two layers together we can go to Layer and Merge Down. And when we now save it, there it is applied. We'll leave this window open and just click in the background to have a look at our 3D object. And let's turn this around to do from a different angle. Well, there is our thread starting to turn around. And let's increase the number of turns in here. So once again, we click on it to select it, press the V key to get our head up controls, and now we can continue to wind up this twist amount. And when we get to 360 degrees, well, we can just keep on going. We can have as many turns as we want in here. Let's turn this around a bit. And that's looking pretty good. Now that is the kind of thread that you'd expect from a wood screw. But in this case, we're not drawing a wood screw, we're drawing a bolt. And in a bolt, you don't have anything like this kind of sharpness on your thread. We already have our source window open, so we can just go to the window menu and choose it from the bottom. Now, because we didn't close this window, if we go onto the Layers panel, we can undo in other words, step backward, and what that does is it undoes by stepping back in the history just in this window. So now we can have this back as two separate layers again. We can get rid of this layer and we make another new layer. And this time, rather than having pointed edges onto our screw thread, Let's see how it looks if we have rounded ones. So we'll use the elliptical marquee tool again to make our circular selection and we'll copy this around our screw thread. Once again, we'll merge these two together and when we save it, that's better. That's much more the kind of effect that we want. With any 3D object, in Photoshop CS6, you can now go back and you can edit the source even after you've extruded it, you've twisted it, you've tapered it, whatever you want to do. You can always go back and change it. We'll use the Move tool to select it. And now let's press the V key to get our controls. 
let's extrude this a little bit further and add a couple more twists. And there is the thread section of the bolt complete. Now we've made the thread, let's hide this layer and make a new layer on which we're going to make the cap. Because this is a bolt and not a screw, we want to give it a hexagonal shaped cap. And we can do that most easily by using the Shapes tool. We'll choose the Polygon tool from here, make sure we have six sides selected, and also make sure it's not selected as a star. And let's start dragging to draw our hexagon. If we hold the space bar down, we can move it around and then carry on drawing it. If I hold the Shift key, we can make it come out so that one of the flat edges is parallel to the ground, just like this. Now you've noticed I've drawn this as a path rather than as a shape. And the reason for that is that I want to round off these corners to make it more like a real screw head. So let's turn this path into a selection by holding Command on a Mac, Control on a PC and hitting the Enter key. And now we can begin to round these corners. And the best way to do that is to go to the Select menu and use Refine Edge. And what we're seeing now is our selection on a white background. The trouble is there's nothing in our selection. So instead we can choose to view it simply as black and white, where the selected area is white and the unselected area is black. To smooth this off, we could just try dragging the smooth slider, but that's rather uncontrollable. What I find is better is to feather the whole thing and then use the contrast control to tighten up that feather amount. And there is a nice crisp edge with the rounded corners. We can say OK, and there is our selection with the rounded corners, and let's fill that with the same mid-gray we had before, and deselect. We'll make sure that 3D Extrusion is chosen in the 3D panel, and press the Create button. And there's our bolt head extruded. Let's click on it to select it, and press the V key to bring up the head-up controls. We want it extruded much less than that, so let's drag this down so we get the appropriate size of head for our screw. We also want to round off these corners, and we can do that with the second set of extrusion controls. Pressing the V key on your keyboard again brings up this second set. On the right here are the inflation controls, and these are a special set of controls which we'll look at in more detail in a future tutorial. For now, let's look on this side and we'll look at the bevel controls. This is the bevel angle and this is the bevel width. First of all, we drag on the bevel width and we can drag right or left to increase or reduce that width. And you can see what this is controlling is literally the width of this bevel. The angle control determines the angle at which the bevel leaves the side of the object, and the default position is 45 degrees. We can raise that so it now approaches 90 degrees, and we can flatten it. We can even give that a negative value, so now the head is sunk into the screw head. Let's leave that at the moment for round about our 45 degrees. Now that's not a bad bevel, but we can make it a little more interesting by having a different shape to it. Let's go to our Properties panel, and because we have the bevel control selected, this is now showing us the cap controls, and here we can set both the width and the angle precisely. What we can also do is change the shape of this bevel. If we click this little down arrow next to the contour button, 
we can see all these preset shapes appear. And when we click on one of these, you can see how it changes the shape of that bevel. Up or down, various different curves, and so on. The more complex the shape, the more complex the bevel. Or we can make it a simple rounded shape, which is more like a screw head. What we can also do is click in the middle to bring up the precise controls. And here we can see this is the preset we had, the half round, and you can see the names of all the other presets. We can drag on here, and as we drag, you can see the shape of this bevel changing. So we can create any bevel shape we like simply by dragging on here to produce the shape. And let's go for something a bit fancy like this. And we'll say OK to that. So there is our bolt head complete. Let's go back to the Layers panel and reveal the thread again. And the problem is that our cap has a ground plane going in this direction and the thread has a different ground plane going in a different direction. And you can see they're slightly at odds with each other and that's why they don't fit properly. What we want to do now is to select the cap and the thread by holding the shift key down to select the bottom layer and we want to merge these two layers together. 3D menu and we can choose Merge 3D Layers. And this puts them together into a single layer. Let's turn this around and you can see there is our screw head nudged out the side. And the reason it's positioned it so bizarrely is it's aligned both the ground planes and that's the result in their default position. Even though we've merged these both together, if we look in our 3D panel, you can see that the thread layer and the cup layer remain as two separate objects. So let's take the thread layer and now let's pop open the little arrow by it and in that thread layer we can select the thread mesh itself. Now, in the Properties panel, when we go onto the Coordinates button, we can now set these coordinates all to zero. Zero, tab to go to the next field, type zero, tab to go to the next one, and zero again. And now we know that our thread now is fitting exactly flat on this ground plane. And let's just zoom out a little so we can see the image a bit more clearly. We'll repeat this with the cap layer. So we open the cap layer tab, select the cap by itself, once again go on to the coordinates tab and set everything to zero. With this still selected, Let's now bring this forwards using the 3D axis controller and here it is. Our cap is obviously much too small for the thread. So let's go into the centre here and drag to make the whole thing bigger. And that's about right. The next step is to try and position this so that the two align. There are several ways we can do this. We can drag up, drag to the side and say, well, that looks more or less OK. But we need to get it more accurate than this because we're building a 3D model. It may look fine from this angle, but it won't from other angles. If we go to the View menu and choose to show the secondary 3D view, we can now see, looking at it from this side, it's not aligned. And so we can drag it over until it appears to be lined up. And we can repeat this with different views of our object. Alternatively, there's a simple way. 
Let's move this so it's clearly not aligned. And we can put our 3D secondary view away. We can select the cap layer and the thread layer. And now we can simply use our align controls to get these lined up. So we want to align vertical centers and horizontal centers. We can select just the cap layer and bring this forwards. And there it is. If we now click off it, we can rotate this around and there is our completed 3D screw. Let's pan this across a bit, rotate it down, and there's our object. Let's now position this so that it fits properly onto our ground plane. At the moment, you can see the cap is projecting below the ground plane. Now we have to do this manually. So let's go to our camera and choose to view this from the right. There's our object. And let's zoom in on this so we can see it more clearly. We'll switch back to our rotation tool and with both layers selected let's now rotate them and position it so that this is now fitting neatly on top of this ground plane. And we can drag it back just a little. We can now manipulate that view to get any position we want on this object. And there is our completed 3D model. And this is how that same bolt can look when it's lit, when it's had textures applied, and when it's put in a different background. And we'll look at how to do all this in a future tutorial.